Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia and Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today we are reviving and reinvigorating the How to Make a Lyric Video tutorial for 2020. For those of you that have seen my old How to Make a Lyric Video tutorial, maybe you're coming over from the old video to the new one, welcome. I also apologize because that video is very outdated. Also, the information contained in that video was slightly outdated. So I'm very excited to show you guys new methods and new ways to make a lyric video in 2020. We're in the future from that old video. We're in the present now, but the... So I suppose you want to see some examples of what we're going to be making and breaking down and creating today. So here they are. This one has no music behind it, but I'm going to narrate it. Look, lyrics on the ground, environmental 3D track text, wow! So those are the two examples that we're going to be looking at and breaking down today. I'm not gonna show you exactly one for one how to recreate them, but I'm gonna show you all the elements inside of them that you can use to create your own lyric video. Spoiler alert, none of this stuff is actually complicated. It's actually a series of very basic and simple things all combined to make something that looks complicated. So as long as you guys are down to learn the basics and understand the basics, you will be able to create something that other people will think is complicated, but it's actually fairly simple. Now, let me preface this whole thing by saying, I don't actually know what song you guys are gonna create a lyric video for. I went with a pop music track, so my design theme and color scheme and everything is very poppy, like actually physically popping in the animation of music. Whereas if you do something on the hip hop side or the indie rock side, you might have a little bit darker tones, darker vibes, navy blues, grays, blacks. It might be slower. The lyric treatment might not be as crazy as a pop track. So just know that going into it, the stuff that you're gonna learn today is going to transfer over to what you're doing, but you'll just have to augment it a little bit depending on the music that you're using. This is not a music theory tutorial. It is a lyric video tutorial, take it or leave it. So the fundamentals that we're gonna be looking at today and learning are basic text animation and masking, taking that basic text and adding in a 3D camera to kind of jazz it up a little bit, and then doing some environmental text with a 3D tracked camera inside of After Effects. So the combination of all of those basics kind of create a really awesome lyric video that you guys hopefully will make after watching this video and feel inspired. All right, I am ready to jump in, but first let me tell you in the video description below, you will find a bunch of links to some lyric videos that I've done, some tutorials on my channel that I think will help you out in this process. And of course, the nice guy that I am, I'm gonna give you a project file so you guys can kind of open this up and deconstruct it and look at all the cool animations if you're feeling a little confused by the end of this. So download the project file, open up Adobe After Effects because we are getting started right now. Okay, After Effects is open and we are going to revisit the pop lyric video one more time. And I'm gonna show it to you guys with and without the 3D camera. Before we get into the 3D camera explanation, you guys should actually see how the basic functionality works before we kind of level it up a little bit. So let's check out the lyric video with the 3D camera. Now this is actually all done on a flat composition. So let me show you what that composition looks like without any 3D camera movement at all. So if you guys look at this composition, it is vastly different, but it is actually the exact same thing that we just watched without the 3D camera. So again, the basics that we're gonna learn today are basic text animation and masking, and then we will add in the 3D camera. Because if you can get your text to animate in, in a fun and entertaining way, adding a 3D camera into your composition will actually make it 10 times better. So it starts with that, the building block of basic text animation. All right, let's come down here to our timeline and just kind of look at what's going on with these text layers. I'm gonna highlight all of them and then hit U on my keyboard and that's gonna show me all of my animated properties. And guys, this is just a scale and rotation animation on this text. There is nothing more that's going on with that. Yes, of course, you can look at this and say, well, Ian, there's a shadow in it that's really stylizing it, but that's a style added on to the text animation. The text animation at its core is very, very simple. So let's check it out. We're gonna go frame by frame and it is just scaling up from zero and rotating slightly overshooting the rotation and the scale before settling back in its place. And if we highlight these keyframes and go to our graph editor, you can kind of see what the scale animation looks like. So down here is at zero, and this keyframe right here is 74% scale, which is its resting place. And it scales up from zero, overshoots the 74, comes all the way up to like 115, and then drops back down to 74. So you can kind of see that here represented. It goes past 74, and then just kind of settles in place. And that's all it's doing, and rotating. 
So if we go back to our layers, the first lyric is rotating in from positive 12. The second lyric over here is rotating in from negative nine. This one isn't rotating at all and so on and so on. So they are just varying in rotation properties, but all the scale is exactly the same. So I did one animation on the very first lyric and then I literally just copied and pasted to every other lyric and just adjusted the rotation, obviously making sure to time it all up with the lyrics of the song so that it matched up exactly. And that's really it guys. That is the basic fundamentals of this lyric video is just very simple animation, scale, rotation, and position. So there are a couple things that I want you guys to really pay attention to when you're doing a lyric video. First and foremost is syncopation with the music and making sure that the lyrics come in when the lyrics are being sung. Don't have them come in too early or too late. So you're gonna have to listen to this a bunch of times to really get it right. The second most important thing, and this may sound crazy to you, is centering your anchor point in all of your text layers. Because if you don't center your anchor point, any rotation or scaling that you do on that layer is going to rotate or scale from a really random place. So if you center that anchor point right in the text layer, you're gonna guarantee that all of the transform properties that you apply to that layer are gonna come from the very center. And that's important for making it look clean and simple at the end of the day. So here is a quick and literal example, guys. My anchor point is right here for this text layer. And I just put it in a random spot just to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So if I go to rotate this layer, it's actually going to rotate from the center of this anchor point, it's gonna rotate in a really strange way. Like you're not actually going to be able to get uniform rotation from this text layer because the anchor point is in a strange spot. Also, if I scale it, it's going to scale from that anchor point and that just looks really, really weird. So what I'd recommend doing is centering it in your text layer. My shortcut is Alt-C. The After Effects default is Control, Alt, and Home. Or you can also come up to Layer, Transform, and Center Anchor Point in Layer Content. I mention this all the time in my videos because it is so important. The last thing you wanna do is go through and do a whole animation and then go to rotate something and realize that your anchor point isn't centered and then you kinda of have to redo everything and it's it's a huge pain in the ass. So just center your anchor point, the second thing that you do, and I promise that will take you very far. And now that that nerdy stuff is out of the way, the last thing that I added in here was this long shadow. It is the Red Giant Universe long shadow. It just gives it a nice stylized Instagram looking effect. All it is is an augmented drop shadow that just kind of follows the outline of the text and it just looks really nice. And the last thing that I added to just jazz this up are these little tiny animations as the text pop in. Now again, in the video description below, you will find a bunch of stuff, including my affiliate link to AE Juice. These little animations are from AE Juice. They are amazing. It is a plugin built straight in After Effects and it has like thousands and thousands of pre-made animations. You just double click on the one that you like, it throws it right in your composition and you can start designing around that. So if you guys have never heard of it, I highly recommend checking it out, AE Juice. Link in the video description below if you wanna help me out by using my link. I use this stuff all the time, trust me. I wouldn't be promoting it to you if I didn't believe in it. So that's really it guys. There's nothing else to the beginning of this video. If we go on to the other side, you see more of the same. Little text popping in, little AE Juice animations coming in here. And the only thing that I did outside of the basic text animation was this masking right here on this last again. So all I did to get this right on animation, it's actually very simple. I applied a mask path to a solid and then applied a stroke to it. So if I turn this layer on, you will see that this is what the stroke ended up looking like. And then I animated the end of the stroke to start from zero and then end at 100. So it actually finishes out the stroke. Then I set my text layer to look at this stroke layer as a mat. I have it set to alpha mat. And when you do that, it will actually make the text right on. You never actually see the stroke. And that's a nice way to just get any font to be a handwritten text. Surprise, there is a tutorial link in the video description below that goes through that entire process in excruciating detail. Go watch it after this video. You also have access to the project file, so you guys can go in there and kind of rip that apart to see exactly what I did. Now, the Coupe de Resistance, the Coupe de Gras, the Coupe de Sanjay Coupe the secret sauce is the 3D camera, and that's kind of what gives it a lot of life. So I'm going to explain to you in the easiest way I know how the 3D camera edition using this camera example composition. Now check it out. I I have two text layers right here. The lyrics that you guys are used to seeing already, one on the pink side and one on the white side. Now what I'm gonna do first and foremost is make all of these layers 3D because they won't work unless you're using 3D layers. The next thing I'm gonna do is come up to layer new camera and I'm just gonna drop in whatever the After Effects default camera is into my composition. Then I'm going to come up to layer new null object and I'm going to rename that null object camera control. Then from there, I'm going to pick whip my 3D camera to that camera control layer, and I'm going to do all of my camera positional movements using this cam control null object because it just makes it a lot easier than animating on the camera itself. 
I've done it both ways. I've come across a lot of issues animating straight onto the After Effects camera. So using a null object is just a really easy and safer way to animate the camera, which you're gonna see right now. So basically all I wanna do is focus on this layer here and then move the camera over to focus on this layer here. Open up the position properties for the camera control, come right up here to one view and change this to two views horizontal so I can actually see my camera in action and making sure that our null object is also in 3D so we can get the Z position orientation. And I'm going to push this forward on the Z axis. Now I want you guys to notice what's going on on the left and the right. The camera, which is this guy right here, is physically moving closer to our board, which is here, in and out of the camera. So this is Z space, getting closer and farther away from the camera. So on the null object, as I push into Z space, I am pushing into that board over here on the right hand side. So I'm gonna push it in just a little bit and now I'm going to move it over on the X axis so I can just center this up right in my composition so this looks like a full screen lyric. This is looking really nice so far. So I'm going to set a position keyframe and I'm just gonna come over two seconds. We're not gonna try to do this fancy or whatever. I'm just gonna show you the basics. Now I'm going to move this over on the X axis so now we see our white and pink lyrics over here on this side. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are now moving a 3D camera from left to right to reveal both sides of this board. Now, if I turn the camera off, you will see it is just a board. Nothing really is interesting. I built it all flat. But as soon as you add in this camera, you are able to kind of manipulate it in 3D space and you can do some really cool stuff. Yes, it looks very robotic and very plain. That's because we haven't done anything in the graph editor yet. You guys know me, this is my process. Right click on position, go to separate dimensions. It will give you X, Y, and Z all individual from each other. We are only working on the X axis right now for this example. So I'm gonna hit F9 to turn these to easy ease keyframes, then come right up here to the graph editor. And I'm just gonna smooth out this curve. I want it to move very quickly away from my original text. And I want it to ease into the end of my secondary text here and that is indicated by this curve right there. Now check it out. Nice, that's looking good. And that is the very, very basic explanation of how to use your text with a 3D camera. So now we need to combine what we did in step one with what we just did here in step two with the 3D camera. Okay, you guys are gonna do very basic text animation and masking first on a flat surface. Once you've done all that flat surface stuff, now you're gonna add in a 3D camera and you can do some zoom effects. You can swoop over to other things. You can stylize your board to cross boundaries. You can add AE juice animations. You can really do a lot but if you create it on a flat surface first, like you're literally just making a painting, then you take a camera and go into the painting and you can see all the different details, then your lyric video starts coming to life. I understand that it may be a little confusing, but it is really cool also. All right, last but not least, we are going to talk about environmental text and 3D camera tracking in After Effects. And personally, this is one of my favorites. I love when people do environmental text and track it in. It's just a really cool stylistic choice, especially when you see somebody walk in front of text like I have demonstrated here. She walks right in front of lyrics and it just looks really cool and really clean. And I know you guys may be thinking that's really complicated or that's gonna take hours and hours of work. It's actually not. It's a lot simpler than you may think. This one actually might be more simple than the other lyric stuff that we did at the beginning of this video. And I'm gonna show you right now, I guess. Let's just... <sighs> All right, Ian, how do you do it? Tell me how to do it. Well, first and foremost, I'm going to start a new composition by taking the video that you wanna add the text to and dragging it down to this new composition button, all right? That's the easy part. What's even easier is clicking on that layer and coming right over here to your tracker and hitting this little button that says track camera. After Effects will analyze it in the background and you will see indicated right up here where it says initializing. This will show you how long you have to wait. All right, 20 seconds, that's not that bad. Should we do it in real time or should we just fast? All right, let's fast forward. Once After Effects solves for your 3D camera, if you scrub through your clip, you will see a bunch of really colorful little targets all over your footage that are kind of appearing and disappearing at random. And this is what we're gonna use to create our environmental text and plane and 3D camera inside of After Effects. So if you scrub over all this stuff, you'll see that there's like a little target that appears when you start hovering in between each of these little targets. And that's a good thing, you want that. So what we're gonna do is find where the target matches the plane that we wanna put the text on the best. For me, it's like somewhere in this area, you want it to be perfectly flat with the ground. Right about there looks great for me. I'm going to single click. It will select three points. Now I'm just gonna right click and go to create solid and camera that will put a plane on the ground and a 3D camera in our scene that is now tracked really nicely to the ground. 
Now there's a lot of machine learning and a lot of crazy stuff that just happened behind the scenes and all you guys had to do was just click a couple buttons and we're like 50% done with this. It's actually super easy. So the next thing you guys are gonna do is come right up here to your text tool and you're gonna type in your lyrics. Great. And I'm going to change the color to match her little romper thing here because why not? Now check this out guys. I'm gonna make that layer 3D right over here and it's gonna go over here. Don't worry about that for now. Click on your plane, hit P on the keyboard to bring up position. Click on your lyric, hit P on the keyboard to bring up its position. Now click on the plane position, control C to copy it. Click on the lyric position, control V to paste it. And now delete that plane out of your composition. And you now have the lyrics tracked to the ground just like so. So what you can do here is you can actually scale it up a little bit and you can even rotate it on the Y axis if you'd like just to kind of get it a little bit more looking like how you want. Again, this is very subjective and everybody's is going to be different. Now, how do I get her to walk in front of it, Ian? How do I do it? All right, so now I'm back in my original composition just so I could show you guys exactly how I did this. Ian, oh my God, it's amazing. She's walking in front of the word lyrics. How did you do it? Did you use the After Effects Roto Brush tool to just roto out a portion of her leg? Actually, yeah, that's exactly what I did. I used the Roto Brush tool and rotoed out a portion of her leg that walks in front of the text. And if I mute this layer, look, now her foot's behind the text. Now it's in front of it. Now it's behind it. Now it's in front of it. It's so simple. Okay, well, it's kind of simple. It's a little complicated. There's two ways to do this. You could either manually mask out frame by frame her foot going across the text, which is going to take a very, very long time. I will say that it will likely look better at the end, but it's just gonna drive you absolutely bonkers. The second way and the preferred method of doing it, at least for me, is using the Roto Brush tool because you still have to go frame by frame, but it kind of like does all the masking and like maneuvering for you. And then you just kind of tweak some settings at the end of it. It's actually super easy. Let's take a look. All right, so scrub to the part of your video that you want your subject to walk in front of the lyrics. Right here is mine. I'm going to duplicate my original video right on top of itself, just like that. And I'm going to trim this layer back to where I want it to start by hitting Alt in the left bracket on my keyboard. Then I'm going to scrub through to where I want her to stop. Her foot kind of crosses the line right about there. And I'm going to trim that layer back by hitting Alt and the right bracket. And now I'm going to move this up on top of all of my text. Now, here comes the fun part with the Roto Brush. Come to the very beginning of your layer and double click on that guy. Then come right up here to the Roto Brush tool and click on that once. And now we're just gonna go in here and we're gonna paint in where we want it to Roto. Just like that, all right? It got a pretty good track so far. And guys, if you wanna remove or add stuff, adding is just a single left click. You can kind of paint in where you need it to go. But say you go too far, like I just did here, it's including all of this stuff. I can hold down Alt, which will turn it into a negative value, and I can paint out the area that I don't want. All right, so this is looking good for my first frame. It's going to be everything inside of this magenta squiggle. The next thing I'm gonna do is hit Control and the right arrow on my keyboard to go over to the next frame. And I'm just gonna adjust where I want it to include or not include in the mask. Looking good to me, control right arrow, and we're going to the next frame and just paint out some of these rocks, paint back in her shoe, just like that, looking good. And you guys will continue to do this whole frame by frame thing for as long as you need. As you see over time, it is actually starting to get a pretty good mask track on its own without me having to tell it over and over again, but you'll just have to correct it every once in a while. Now, I'm not gonna do this for this tutorial because that will take a million years, but what I will show you is how to finish this. Once you've done the duration of your clip, you're gonna come right down here and you're going to freeze the effect, which will actually make it its own layer mask in After Effects. If you don't freeze it, you're not actually gonna get that segmented rotoscope out of your video footage. So make sure that you freeze it. It's doing its thing. It's on frame 14 right now of 30. So this doesn't take very long, but you have to do it. So once you have frozen your roto, you can come right back up here to your original composition. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen, you have just rotoed out a body part and put it in front of some lyrics, hopefully if you're following along with this video, which is absolutely 100% cool. I'm just gonna solo this layer real quick so we can see what we did. Uh, and we can come in here and we can refine this a little bit using these sliders over here. So I 100% recommend using the feather slider. As you can see, it is not making those harsh edges very harsh. And this will just round stuff out and make it look a lot better in in the end. And the other one I would use is the shift edge, which will shrink it in or expand it out just a little bit. So if you are seeing some of the background in your roto, you can actually shrink the edge down a little bit to cut corners and make it a little bit smoother. 
The reduced chatter slider actually does a lot. It's kind of like an amorphous, like random seed kind of that goes around the outside of your mask. So if I turn this all the way up to 100, you can see it kind of rounds things out and smooths things out a little bit more. So you guys can play with these until you fine tune it enough for yourself. But that is it guys. It looks really clean. We didn't have to like adjust mask points frame by frame for like six and a half hours. And it worked pretty well. Again, this is one of my favorite ways to kind of display lyrics or text in a video, just because it fuses that whole graphic design thing with real life thing, which I think is really cool. Ooh, that was a lot of information. What time is it? How long is this tutorial? Regardless, if you've made it to this point so far, congratulations. You just learned a lot of cool stuff, hopefully. So going back and recapping in the most simplistic thing I can think to recap in, you guys just need to learn the basics. Learn the fundamental basics of text animation, basic text animation, basic masking, basic 3D camera movement, basic 3D camera tracking, and then all of those things together will combine into making something really, really cool and unique, a lyric video that you should be proud of at the end of the day. If you're bored and you're trying to learn, there are a plethora of links in the video description below for you to check out, including but not limited to a bunch of tutorials from me, a project file of this for you to take a look at and some affiliate links that you guys should absolutely check out mainly for this video, AE Juice. It is a really, really cool plugin integration for After Effects and I highly recommend picking some of them up. They are a great tool to have in your toolbox. All right, that's it. I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do anymore other than ask you to please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and also check out the last video that you missed. I'm going to try to do more videos. All right. It's the quarantine. It's the pandemic. People are really unsure of what's going on in the world. But what I am sure of is that I love editing. All right. Subscribe. Check out the last video that you missed. And I will see you next time.